This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. Recently, a dear friend gave me a birthday present, a marvelous little book titled Springs of Friendship. And one of the quotes in it is this one by the Russian author Dostoevsky. To love someone means to see him as God intended him. But what about you yourself? Can you look in the mirror and see yourself, you as God intended you? Why are you alive? What is your purpose? What is it that God has intended for you and the living of your days upon this earth? Declared the master of masters, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And again, he said, I have come that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. Each one of the Beatitudes in the New Testament of the Scriptures begins with the word blessed. And that word is translated from the King James English to mean happy. Happy are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Happy is the spiritual truth which this Jesus of Nazareth came proclaiming. And by the power of God in your life, your life can be inwardly transformed. There's an old golfer's story about a man who never lost his temper during a game. Other players would be cursing, red-faced, breaking their clubs, but never this particular man. Even if he missed the simplest of putts, he wouldn't swear, he wouldn't say one single word. But wherever he used to spit, the grass would never grow again. Outward self-control is better than none at all, to be sure. But without inward self-mastery, it may be venomously self-consuming, self-destructive. For authentic self-mastery is not merely a rigid outward restraint of yourself, but a transformative inward reorientation of discovering the spiritual power to live your life in a new way entirely as a son or daughter of the living God. You are kin to the Creator, the very God who hurled the stars and the comets, the galaxies, the asteroids into outer space, who created universe upon universe, galaxy upon galaxy is the God who loves you with a love which will not let you go. The heart beating at the center of this universe of universes is a heart of love, a heart which loves you. And this living God not only has a plan for this planet, God has a purpose for your life and how to live it, how to live it so that it's really satisfying, so you're really fulfilled, so at long last you know why on earth you're here on earth. You have a thirsting for that that burns like salt in your soul. And nothing will ever really satisfy the real needs of the real you short of the finding and knowing of God, the experience of the transformative power of the Spirit of God moving and dynamic within your life. And the way you think and feel and act and react living as the son or daughter of God and the brother and sister to humankind you were created to be for this entire world is the family of God. This entire universe of universes is a universe of universes of love. A few days ago I watched a giant steel mechanical crane it looked like a huge praying mantis drop its metal cable down into a pit and hoist out a small tractor from it. But the cable had to descend into the pit before it could pull the tractor out. So did the spirit of the living God come into this world and into your life, into your mind, to lift you above the world, above mere materialism, above despair and frustration and a sense of meaninglessness to your existence, into a spiritual consciousness of the love and the nearness of God, declared Jesus, the kingdom of God is within you, within you, inside of you. God loves you. God's Spirit has come into your present situation where you are right now, wherever you're listening to this radio broadcast around the world, whether one of the people who write to us from Europe or from America or from Asia or Africa 
Australia, the Middle East, the Caribbean, wherever you're hearing this radio broadcast around the world, God's Spirit is with you and within you this very moment. You don't have to clean up and become different first for God to care about you. Your life may be a mess. It may seem that everything that can go wrong has gone wrong, and even the things you thought were going to go right have gone wrong, but God still loves you. God loves you. You are a son or daughter of God, and God this very moment will lift you above your present predicaments and give you a higher perspective upon your life, a new sense of meaning and zest and motivation in the living of your life, living as you were really born and created to live, living by faith and in joy as a son or daughter of God. Perhaps great sorrow has come into your life. Strangely, curiously, the joy of the Spirit can transcend sorrow, even in the midst of the death of loved ones and tragedy in your family, or even of a global scale. The joy of the love of God, the joy of the Spirit, can invigorate you and rejuvenate you and make all things new in your life and your consciousness, in your soul. And that faith will not only take your soul to heaven, it will bring heaven to your soul, a new sense of the zest and the real happiness of being alive upon this earth. It is paradoxical but true that when you spiritually crave for something above and beyond yourself, you are in fact really craving for something within yourself. For the Master declared the kingdom of God is within you, and you long for communion with the Spirit of God within your mind. God loves you. You are a child of God, kin to the Creator. Believe it or not, dare to believe it with the faintest flicker of faith. That's a beginning. And it will grow and grow, said Jesus. Have faith as a grain of mustard seed. You've seen a grain of mustard seed? They used to make jewelry with a mustard seed inside it. A tiny, tiny little yellow thing. But when it grows, it becomes a huge plant, a large bush. And so it is with faith. It begins in small ways in your life, perhaps in this very moment, listening to this radio broadcast, that faint flicker, that beginning seed of faith in your mind, in your heart, in your soul is starting to sprout and take root, and it will transform your life. And at last, you'll really know why on earth you're here on earth. To live in love, in love for God and love for others. The two great commandments, remember, are simply these. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And God is right there with you where you are as you think, as you ponder, perhaps as you doubt. But in this moment, as you listen, God is there and God's Spirit will enable you to exercise what faith you have and it will be transforming. Time perhaps for a grimsly terrible parable. In teaching children their fractions during the arithmetic class, there was a certain school teacher in grade school who said, suppose you had one apple and you wanted to divide that one apple among three children, what would you do? After a moment of cogitation and thought, one little boy said, I would make applesauce. Without irreverence in any sense, consider Nevertheless, this comparison, there is one God, the first great source and center of all things and beings, the creator, the controller, the infinite upholder of all reality, the universal father, one God. But this one God has billions and billions and billions of sons and daughters. And so God has chosen to give each one of his children, a fragment of himself, a spark of spirit, of God's very living spirit to indwell your mind this very moment, and thus to lead and guide you down the path to perfection. For the kingdom of God is within you. You can have help in your decision-making, in your planning, in your prognosticating, thinking about the future. What do you want to do? What are you going to do with the rest of your life? 
regardless of how young or how old you may be, what are you going to do not only with the rest of your life, you may not know what you're going to do with the next five minutes. And some people are concerned about where they're going to spend eternity, don't know how to spend a rainy Saturday afternoon. What are you going to do with the rest of your life? Some people are so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. What are you going to do with the next few days, hours, minutes, months, years, which may be allotted to you to live your life upon this earth? The living God, your Father and your friend, has a will for you, a plan and a purpose for you if you will seek it. And if you seek, you will find. So the Master, seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. You live in the continual presence of God because the continual presence of God lives within you. God is closer than a Band-Aid, nearer than a suntan. God is within you as certainly as blood and bone and sinew. Just as in the cartoon I once saw, it showed a man searching for his spectacles which were perched upon his nose. So it is that you seek for the very God whose spirit indwells your mortal mind this very moment. In longing for the love of God, you run with a battering ram toward an open door because that door is already open. God already loves you. The love of God is openly available to you this very moment. If only you will have the faith to believe it, to accept it to know that it's real, to discover the reality of it, because it's not just a theory anymore. It's something you have experienced in your soul, in your life. This faith is not just hypothesis. It is something which you can know, and you can know that you know it. Some things are only acquired by experience. So it is, for instance, with prayer. When it comes to praying, learning is doing, and doing is learning. That's how you learn it. By the process of praying, you learn to pray. By the act of trying to pray, you find the way to pray, not by theories, but by your own experience of talking with God. And it becomes real to you. A great cook becomes a great cook, not just by reading a great cookbook, but by cooking, by doing it by participating in it, by experiencing it. So with prayer, you learn to pray by praying, and you find the goodness of God as it is written, taste and see, taste and see that God is good. God loves you in this moment and has a wonderful will for your life and instructions, step-by-step -step things God wants you to do, guidance for you. People understand when military troops out in the field need a walkie-talkie to get orders from their commanders, we understand when a football quarterback calls timeout to talk to the coach or when a baseball manager gives signals from out by the dugout. So what is so strange about it for sons and daughters of God to receive guidance from their Heavenly Father? God has that for you. If you will seek, you will find. And if this is the first time you've ever dared have faith in that, have faith in it beginning this moment. And all things, all things will begin to be transformed for you. And for free literature on the spiritual life, write to us here at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080-3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, How Do You Pray, What Difference Can It Make in Your Life? That's what I've been talking about on this very broadcast, that communication with God. Write for this free literature, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644-USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.